fun to work in big corporates i imagine because they have um a lot of resources to spend on company events team building events and all of that stuff and mm. for me those were some of the funnest experiences i had to work aside from work what are some of the fun things that you've done while working here well um this year has been quite an adventure um i've gone for whitewater rafting and that was in support of faraja cancer Trust. first of all what's that <laughs> Well, actually, for those who don't know, <laughs> mm -hmm. there's a river called Sagana, mm -hmm. and there you can go with, um, you can do kayaking, you can do water rafting. So basically, you get into a inflated boat, and you paddle down the rafts, um, you go down the rapids. It's really exciting. Sometimes you capsize, sometimes you have to pull someone back. But if you're the size of you in that raft, obviously, the thing has to <laughs> capsize, but okay. Surprisingly, I didn't fall over. Surprisingly. Surprisingly. Yes. So I've done water rafting this year. We have uh, regular CSR events. So we visited a children, uh, children's home earlier this year. We have visited an elderly people's home this year. Um, and we have regular meetups and drink ups in the farm. And it's a nice time to socialize with people who are much more senior than you are or people from other departments that you'd otherwise not engage with. And it really creates that culture that we are part of one family, one team that's trying to better ourselves, whether it's individually, holistically, but collectively. What's the one challenge, if you had to pick out one thing that majority of the people at NK today are facing or struggling with as a challenge, what would that be? Mm, I think maybe it would be not being challenged because every day is a challenge in the sense that there are so many times you'll be working on something and the person who gives instruction says oh by the way it's never been done before or oh by the way it's the first transaction in Kenya and so you have to sit down and think how do I get this done how would it be done in another jurisdiction so I think maybe to spin it off it's not something that people are struggling with but it's something that keeps helping them grow every single day okay that's not even the challenge I was expecting, but aside from that, I think we can then find out what, at, what, how long does it take from the first time you get a transaction, since you mentioned that there are times you're given a deal and it's the first time it's been in Kenya or whatever. How long does it take since from the first time you receive it to when you're handing it over back to the client? Well, it really depends because the transactions can be really diverse. So something from a simple acquisition to a really complicated transaction where you have, especially where you have um, multi-sectoral governance, so you maybe have a transaction where the CBK is involved, the capital markets authority is involved, so that takes a lot of time because of the approvals that you need to get, and sometimes even just between the clients when they are trying to agree on the commercial terms. So there really isn't an average deal life. You have shorter transactions, maybe uh, those to do with property, you have those that take a much longer time, like a project such as um, Lake Turkana Wind Farm or um, construction of Two Rivers Mall. So that's more long term. Yeah. A lot of people are watching this interview and they're, they're seated wherever they are and they're like, oh my God, I want to be this guy because of many things. But let's focus on because of you working at ANK. What are the things that they can be able to replicate in their life so that they can be able to work? At ANK? I think the first is find out what you're good at and the only way you can do that is by doing many things. So when I was in uni I did uh, almost anything and everything that was under the sun. So I was in a number of clubs, I tried out so many activities and that's so mean that I failed that but it made me realize what I'm also good at. Please tell us what you failed at. I'm, I would like to hear that for personal gratification. <laughs> Well, I once tried out for this uh, club called ISEC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I remember I was shut down at the first interview. I can't understand why. And but... that's really surprising because ISEC literally calls on to everybody. Come. Well, come thanks. one, come all. Th thanks for this, Ashley. <laughs> I'm <yeah>. just saying. <laughs> so, yeah, there was that. Um, I tried, in high school, I tried joining the choir. That did not work out. That is not surprising to anyone. Oh, thank you. Like, yeah, it was Some of these me. things are so obvious, it's, it's, it's really surprising why he bothered to <laughs> try and go to the choir. But that showed me that there are things that I'm good at and there are things that I'm not. So I guess one of the first things is explore your talents. And the only way you can explore your talents is by putting yourself in different situations. And the that second thing is know yourself before you 
take yourself to some <laughs> auditions. I have them the third thing. And I think the third thing is set goals and write them down. Have them on a board somewhere that you can look at them every single day such that your actions, every decision that you make is somehow geared towards achieving those goals. Do you think people today who choose to work at ANK as opposed to Wanjiro and Wanjiro Associates, which is a small firm with God knows how many employees, are going to be at a disadvantage because they started out in a large firm? I don't think so. I think that's a really backward mentality. Reason being, um, the market is large enough for everyone to compete. Can we stop the interview? <laughs> <laughs> This is ridiculous to be, <laughs> to be called backward in your own show, but it's okay. We're all here to learn. <laughs> okay. Being in a small firm, you get to learn how to do very many things at the same time. And that's a good thing because sometimes you will be in a situation where uh, you need multifaceted skills. But there are also situations where you need a very specialized skill set. And those are some of the things that you would learn in a big firm. So you learn the systems, you learn how processes work you learn how to think of a transaction in its entirety so from the commercial aspects from the legal aspect and even just the post implementation stage and now that is probably the niche that that person would have as opposed to someone who was in a smaller outfit now this is not to say that either can not do what the other does it's just really understanding your position and the unique advantage you have and how you can leverage that. And knowing that if you think like me, you have backward thinking. <laughs> We're going to transition into a fast Q&A with Chris to just find out what are the features of this guy that make him stand out. Thank you so much for joining us on the show and be ready for the Q&A session. It's going to be really hard. <laughs> if not, law. Finance. Do you have a metro? A couple. Uh, Ken Jugona, Daniel Ngumi, Tony Wainaina, Professor Patricia Kamerimbote, Louis Franceschi. Too many people for one person. Do you consider yourself greedy? Yeah, when it comes to food. Are you dating? Yes. Money or love? Money. Why don't you take pictures? Uh, if you want to see me, you'll see me in person. Oh, do you have trouble with older women because of how you look? No. What's the strangest thing that's ever happened to you? Uh, being stuck between a sliding door. If you were arrested with no explanation, what would your family members think you'd done? Um, driving while talking on the phone. What's the awkwardest thing about you? Uh, one arm is stronger than the other one. 